I'll start by saying, number one, um, I think that for a real reason, like we we definitely miss Matt Eberflus. Shout out to him. Uh, he's actually the defensive coordinator in his second year with the Colts. Um, you know, he, he deserves it um, because of the job that he did here with Jalen and a lot of these linebackers, Sean Lee as well, during his stint here with the Cowboys. But um, I say that we, we miss that only because, and this is not a shot at Chris Richard or Rod Marinelli, but Rod Marinelli has his thing going on with the line. He does a great job developing those guys and getting the most out of them. And I think Eberflus definitely did that with our linebackers. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully Chris Richard is able to turn our defensive back core around because that group above all else has not progressed. But this isn't a video about those guys yet. We'll do that later. But if you see here in the footage that you're looking at, you see how Eberflus uses Darius Leonard, who's having monster a monster career thus far. You know, he plays him in coverage. He plays him downhill. You see here, he, he only has him get into the proper space and then read and react to what's in front of you. Jalen and those guys are asked to read the entire field, and it's just too much. They're playing more like safeties that play in the box rather than linebackers, right? But you see how Leonard is only allow, allowed or asked to read and react to everything that's happening at down in front of him. And on this play in particular, they hid him as if he was spying or blitzing, and he just peeled back out into one of the passing lanes and got himself a freebie interception and a touchdown. These are things that Jalen can do and could do if we schemed him to do it. We don't see those types of plays uh, in our repertoire. Um, the first thing I'll be grading on Jalen is his pass rushing ability or his ability to play downhill because I think out of all else, that's his strong suit. So if I was going to give him a A plus in anything, it would be his pass rushing ability. Although he does cover pretty well for a linebacker, he can occasionally cover you know wide receivers, but he's he's more of a uh, downhill guy. He, he cuts through that gap right there like a running back and gets down and, and kills the quarterback there. That was his rookie year. So that shows even with a limited range of motion and a brace, he was still able to be that effective. This is footage from the Patriots game this year. You can see um, he gets around the edge. He 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 gets over the uh, the cut by when when tried to cut block him. Uh, he gets his hands back up and gets in the passing lane and breaks this pass up. Like these are things that linebackers, you know, add naturally linebackers, you know, should be able to do. But Jalen shows that when you allow him to, you know, do what he does best, which is create chaos in the backfield. He's a different breed. He closes with great range. He stunts. Jalen a monster, man. Like, I, I come at his neck, but don't get me wrong, Cowboys fans. Like, I come at LVE. I come at Jalen. Not because I think they're trash. I come at those guys because I know how good they can be and what type of athletic prowess they have, and I don't feel like we've ever been using that to the top of our ability. Jalen has to make this tackle cleaner there at the end of it, but his closing speed, it just speaks for itself. Like, on this particular play, this is another example of his closing speed and what happens when you only ask him to do limited things. You know, I'm not saying he can only do limited things. I'm just saying he's better doing things that give him an advantage. Like guarding a running back, he has the advantage. Guarding a, a receiver, he doesn't. You see here, he's spying. Now, I only put this move in here because D-Law, you know, that was a hell of a spin. But um, I, you can tell Jalen's told him he had his back because just like on that Watson play, which you'll see later, uh, Jalen goes and he only activates after Law loses the contain. But you see here how he turns the corner, man. That bend is a bend that we we said Randy Gregory was a first round draft pick type talent for that bend, right? And Jalen has that bend just like your best pass rushers, just like Quinn. You know, he can do what Quinn does every play, play in, play out. You know, turn the corner and, and be a speed rusher. You know, just like you see here, he gets around the corner. He scrapes his guy across. I know you don't really see what's happening there, but this is a complex stunt. I do like stunts here and there. I just think we should be doing it uh, with some blitzes included because they're doing a three-way exchange here. So Jalen knows that he has to jump out of this gap because Hyder's crashing down in the middle there, uh, and they're exchanging contain. So Collins is containing outside now, and Jalen knows that this, this center doesn't have I mean, this guard doesn't have him. He's going to no, the center. He's going to run him into his own guard and then scrape him off right there. Boom. And he's there as soon as Bridgewater turns around. Jalen's there to accelerate. When you look at the team that originally exposed us, shout out to the Cowboys for, for getting their revenge this week, too. But when you look at the Rams game, which which originally uh, is when teams start playing us this way, where they started waiting for us to stunt out of the gaps. You see, like Jalen, Jalen, when he's coming downhill. A running back can't deal with him. He broke this pass up, and this should have been an interception and would have been had um, had Woods known that that ball was deflected. He would have turned around and reacted to it earlier. But you can see what type of impact Jalen always has. And if I, if I took every play of him coming downhill, you would be amazed by how many times you see that when he comes downhill, even when it's, 
you know, no no sack and no QB pressure uh, directly. When he does come downhill and he blitzes or he watches what's in front of him, those plays are usually not successful, to be honest with you, for the offense. You know, you'll see here, uh, this is an interception against the Texans. You see how, how well he passed rush there? He just split two guys. And I know it happens so fast, right, that you guys don't really pay attention to how unique of an athlete Jalen is. But look at that. He, he swipes there. He's doing the same exact thing as as D-Law and getting there at the same rate of speed when he's dealing with a double team when he shouldn't be. He should have never got there. Should have never got there. But he got there simultaneously with D-Law. That shows what type of guy uh, Jalen can be when you ask him to, to play downhill. When he's playing as a spy, I know you saw him against Aaron Rodgers as a spy a second ago in the Green Bay game. But you see here, he, he's asked to play sideline to sideline as a spy. He does a great job there uh, against Russell Wilson. Uh, usually against running quarterbacks this year, we haven't done that well. But I think it's due to the fact that we have a different philosophy now because we used to play running quarterbacks pretty good. Like that was him against uh, Wilson. Wilson never really kills us. They beat us, but Wilson doesn't do it. Um, Jalen here, you see he's watching these crossing patterns and this drag route that's coming down underneath him. But at the same time, he's watching McCoy. So as soon as the line integrity breaks down, he's there. So that's how you know he was watching the backfield the entire time. Jalen plays a lot better when you ask him to do things like this. He's watching a receiver here. He's watching Fuller. But he's just trying to stay down here, stay in the passing lanes. And he does a great job at it because when Jalen is down at the line of scrimmage and able to move and react to what's there, he's a different breed. You see him and LVE, they are both keying in on the backfield. Jalen's also in coverage. But as soon as Wilson gets out and squeaks out to the, to the sideline, Jalen can accelerate. You see the same thing here with Cam Newton. Josh Allen would have killed us this year with this, which he did, and so did Trebinsky. But as soon as they get out of the pocket and the container's is broken, Jalen's down there and he's ready because he was asked to do things differently at that point. Uh, sideline to sideline, I gave him an A because if he's clean, meaning you're not letting you know linemen get up field every play to hit him in LVE, those guys, they played different this year because they weren't able to play clean because the Rams kind of exposed the fact that you can just not block your defensive ends here, let them fire off and have your guard and our backside tackle come up and hit those guys, hit Jalen, LVE, and our Lee, and the Cowboys don't have an answer for it uh, because we're stunting so much. We don't have an answer for that. Um, but you see what happens when, you see, they're stunting right there. They stun it right out of the way. And Jalen is like, okay, I'm st he's still free because, you know, Law Lee is playing Sam and he's doing a great job. He's going to get right to the gap and meet that pulling guard right there in the hole, right? So as soon as Lee, you know, reacts to that and he's going to right here, boom, he reacts, Jalen reacts. Now he still lunges and leaves his feet. And if you're going to say he has any weaknesses, I'd say it's the fact that he changes direction kind of slow. He lunges a lot on his tackles. And sometimes he overplays things, but for the most part, Jalen is a solid guy. If you keep him clean, if you kept, just like if you kept Ray Lewis clean, if you keep Jalen clean, he's sideline to sideline just like this. He's beating blockers across their face. They can't really get in re get, into, get into the play. They can't get to him. Um, and you see here, this is sideline to sideline at his finest. He he takes Ertz down to the flat, and then he sees that Goddard's crossing his face. He comes right back across the field, sideline to sideline, with with Goddard and breaks this play up. Boom. Jalen is a different breed when he's asked to guard tight ends and running backs and fullbacks rather than guarding wide receivers in space. That's not where he should be. That's never where he should have been. You see a similar play as to the Aaron Rodgers play here where uh, D-Law kind of crashes the B-gap and loses contain. And Jalen says, OK, I got you back. And he's going to get out to this perimeter. We all know this play. This is a popular play from Jalen. But I had to throw it in there because it's just a prime example as to how well he gets sideline to sideline. Um you know, shedding blocks. He gets a lot of hell for that, but he does it better going forward than he does backwards. I gave him a B because, he, you know, he doesn't do it all the time, but he can. When they're able to set the tone and you have to react to what they're doing, it's a totally different ball game. You see, running backs don't have a shot. I've said this before, but you see how, boom, you see how quick he gets him out of the way. He dislodges his, his brain. He doesn't even know what happened. This is this season, too. So this is an old news. But, you know, there's a sack on that play, and that's because uh, when they blitz, when the Cowboys blitz, we do a great job. You see here he's going to split two defenders, two blockers, I mean. He gets down, and when he's coming downhill, he's too fast to, to really get your hands on as a blocker. You can't get to him because he has proper space, and he's getting downhill fast enough. When you have him playing nine yards off the ball, you're giving those blockers too much time to get to him. Right there. You see how close he is to the ball? Immediately, he's in the backfield. Boom. 
This is where tackles for losses come from. And you see fullbacks, he turned that fullback totally around. He was running forward. He ran five yards in the opposite direction after Jalen shedded that block. Uh, so don't tell me he can't shed blocks. He can shed blocks just fine when you let the man come downhill. Here, boom, bang, bang. There it is. See what I'm saying? He, but on those plays, it's usually an incompletion when he's coming downhill because he forces the ball out of quarterback's hands a lot quicker before they're ready to release. He's going to just throw this guy. This is a 340-pound guard. He's going to just take him, and he's just going to toss him. Boom, toss him. See that? Like That's not a guy who has trouble shedding blocks. That's a guy who needs to be aggressive in order to play his game. So the backing Jalen up, I know I just made a video about him not being guilty. This is like a part two to that because the backing Jalen up uh, is is really what's causing the trouble. You see there, he just puts a guy on his ass. The same dude, number 64, had a bad game against Jalen this time, even though they did beat us. But yeah, Jalen was killing this guy, man. Look at that. Boom. That's a lineman, man. So don't tell me he can't shed blocks. He can kill a block if you let him come forward. That's what the fuck he does, man. Excuse my French, but it's real shit. His cover skills, I gave it A+, plus because we all gave him hell for the Chicago game. But ask yourself, should a linebacker be covering wide receivers on a regular basis, five straight, six straight plays? No. And if he does and doesn't get burnt on the first play for a touchdown, I mean, that's saying something. You see, but this is how he plays best. You know, back him up and let him play everything that's 10 yards and below instead of, you know, deep in the middle of the field. Kirk Cousins tried to take him, you know, and, and, and commit him to that flat. Jalen does something that he didn't expect him to be able to do, which is open his hips back up, spin, not spin, but just open up and kind of rotate his hips and then jump and, and extend on that play. That was a touchdown if Jalen doesn't do that. This is where I don't like him. You know, and that Rob Marinelli, Tampa 2, deep, deep safety type of look is just not there for him. But down here against tight ends in the box, you know, playing physical, that's exactly where he needs to be. Like, you shouldn't use him in any other way because I just don't think he's effective that way. The reason Cheeto has problems is the same reason Jalen's having problems. You're playing him in places where he shouldn't be. Cheeto on this play, this isn't a Cheeto video, but on this play, you see he has a, he has a choice route that he has to, he has to watch um, Goddard coming underneath him and decide there's no way he can make an interception here he's watching Goddard there and he knows Ertz is coming across in that post so he has to get off of Goddard right there disengage and watch Ertz, Ertz. Jalen Ford is a fumble on this play but this is what I, my problem my frustration with this game is is there's no chance other than you doing something miraculous like forcing the fumble there for you to have for any of these defenders to have made a play even the pass rush couldn't have got there because everybody was given so much cushion so you know, I just don't like our scheme. I don't like how we're using our linebackers. I don't care what anybody says. Jalen is not a deer. He's not a safety. He is a linebacker who plays at the line of scrimmage, his best game. Like, I think you should put him in places where he's able to pass rush more often because I think he would wreak a lot more havoc and force a lot more fumbles if you just let the guy get in the backfield, let him guard some running backs, simplify the game for him so that he can just go. It's easy to read and react faster when you're not asked to do as much. You know, if you don't have any wide receiver responsibility or it's very rare, you don't have this much space in the middle of the field. You don't have these problems because Jalen's at home where he should be watching everything that's in the backfield. Shout out to everybody who pays attention. But on this play, I kind of pointed this out before. That blitz was never going to get there. Jalen is asked to do things where he can't even see the ball because his back is to the ball. And then from the top of the screen, you see Cheeto can't make that play underneath. So tell me what this play was designed to accomplish other than giving up a first down because that's exactly what it did and I didn't see any part of this play that was like hey uh, this was shut down this was shut down there was only one place to go with that ball no nope, it was you had plenty of options you know but that's cake when you have the middle of the field that wide open because you're asking your linebackers to play safety and all over the place and, man, and I don't mind a manning up but have a man up against tight ends and, and running backs more often than not I think he can cover Evans I think if he can cover whims and, and these faster quick wide receivers that he does cover successfully for the most part he definitely can cover a tight end. So let Jaden let him loose. Let him do his thing. Shout out to him. I just want you guys to understand these are not negative connotations that I'm casting on these guys. I really think they are better than what the uh, film shows. But just keep that in mind, man. Shout out to everybody who watched this video. I appreciate it. And uh, let's dig.